Uh, it's April the 19th, 1990, and I'm here in the audiovisual studio of Boston College with Paddy Cronin, and we're going to have a chat and a few tunes, Paddy, over the next hour. Thank you very much for Good coming from downtown or uptown or whatever to be with us. And uh, can I just position you for people looking at this videotape now ab about Guinea Willa and growing up? Tell me about when you were born, uh, where you were born, and the days growing up and the music and all of that early thing in your memories about that village and its area? Uh, I was born in 1925 in a place called Ray Bui, means yellow. Ray Bui means yellow, yellow mud, I guess. <laughs> Ray Bui, that's where the town land, the town land, but it was near Gnevgilla. Gnevgilla was the village and the town was Killarney. Our main town was Killarney town. But uh, that's where I was born and it was 1925 and then Later on, I ran into Patrick O'Keefe. How many, how many in the family, Paddy? Nine, nine, nine. Mm, mm. Yeah. And was the music in your family home from the beginning? What about your parents? Well, and my mother played a lot of music. Her mate played in a, a concertina in her younger days, but she never, you know, be busy with kids and everything. Mm. She never went too far with, but she, with, she's the one who had the music, not my father. A lot of people associate the Constantine now with County Clare. But oh, Clare yeah, oh, the best of them in Clare, yeah, yeah. They always were. I mean, they play concertinas in other places, but nothing like Clare. Was it a common instrument on your side? Uh, an old hail is, is out of this world. And there was another fellow there, but he's getting old now. I forget what his name is. The tallish fellow. But he, he was great, too. Mm, mm. He was really great. But hail is the best of them now. Oh, yeah. Anyway, we go. And Ray Bui now, was it a, how far outside Guinea is that now, that town then? Is it just around the village or? Uh, it's about three miles north of the village of Guinea Ratmore is about uh, six miles uh, more, more south. Ratmore is another village, uh -huh. but that's south. Scarty Glen, where Pat Keith hung out, is, is north also. Uh, it'd be across the fields, it'd be three or four miles. So you went to school then? Was there a local school in that town then? Or did no, you have to no, travel? No, uh, I to went to school in a place called Turin Cahill. Ah. Turin Cahill was, Turin was a woman. It uh, was supposed to be a woman, uh, way back centuries ago. And uh, she got lost in the bog or something. They buried her in the bog. And uh, <laughs> Turin Cahill was the name of the place. Anyway, they used to tell fairy tales about it, you know. Sounds like a good story. Like oh, sure. <laughs> 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 Turin Cahill, yeah, that's, that's where the school was, the school was. The Another man, but you had a con with a concertina in the house at home, you still ended up playing the fiddle. How did that no, come about? No, no, no. Uh, there was a fellow who used to play a fiddle, his name was McCarthy. Uh, and he was pretty good at it too. And I used to go, he was related to my father, very far out, but you know, uh, he used to, uh, we used to go hunting hares on Sunday evening, you know, with greyhounds. And I used, to, as a kid, I used to go with him all the time. And uh, anyway, he played the fiddle, you know. So every Sunday when I'd go back after church, he'd take down the fiddle and he'd start playing a few tunes. And, well, you know, I thought he was a genius. When I heard him really playing, you know, and it was all tying in together and everything, I thought he was, and it was good, you know. Mm -hmm. But anyway, anyway, he <coughs> told my father one time, so he used to say, you better get a fiddle, he said, for that guy, he said. So my father and aunt was out here and she took back a fiddle with her. She played a little bit herself. And anyway, my father went to her house one night and he picked up the fiddle and he brought it home. I was in bed, I was a young lad, I was sleeping and the fiddle was there in the morning and I started messing around with it and everything like that, you know. So on the finished part, Keith landed and I was in school and he came up to the window of the school and he knew the teachers there. And he told the teachers, he said, let out young Cronin, he said, I'm going back to the house, he said, I'm going to teach him. And anyway, the teacher said to me, hey, he said, Patrick, Keith has gone back to the house, you better go home. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I left and I went back and he had the fiddle all straightened out when I got back. What age I, were you, Paddy, at that stage? I, I don't know, but I, was, sure. I, I don't really know. Yeah. I, I, must be, I must be nine or ten nine anyway, or ten, I'd yeah. say, or something like that. But anyway, he... He was, uh, he was playing it, anyone. he was playing a tune when I went in and I said to him, what's the name of that tune? He said, The Swallow's Tale. He said, I'll never forget it, you know. So but, that's uh, a, that, anyway, he was yeah. coming to the house until I left for the States. Mm -hmm. So he was, but then he died around, uh, he died the same year as my mother, around 20, uh, 1960, 
1963, I'd say. Mm. I'd say he died in January or February 1962. So you got a bit of a day off school, the first fiddle lesson you had. Oh, I did, yeah, 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 yeah. But now, you see, the swallow's tail, that's a reel, isn't it? That's a reel, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, like, w that was that was not a very difficult tune for him to start off with. with oh, no, he didn't start with, off at all. Yeah. He started off with a very simple tune, and he called it the Monster Bank. Can you give us a, a blast of that one? Oh, this is very simple. Oh, well, I mean, still, this is, this is only for a kid. Yeah. The Monster Bank, he called Yeah, that <laughs> yeah, was yeah. his name, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a poker, really, it's a 2-4 time, but, right. um, you, you know, you, you, he played it awfully slow. Yeah. And I, he wrote down on the top of the book, he said, all good boys do good. Uh, he had the, 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 the letters for all that, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, then play slowly was the next thing he wrote. Of course, he was a teacher, you know. Mm -hmm. Patrick, he lost that school. The school went. <laughs> well, that's another story now. Let's talk oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. a little bit uh, about Patrick Key. But before we talk about himself and his own school days and all those stories about him, um, was that was that the, that was the first lesson you had with O'Keefe? That How, was the first yeah. tune he gave me. Yeah. And uh, I can't think of the last one, but the last one he gave me in Scattergreen when I went back in 1960. And I can't really think of the tune, but that he gave me a jig. Uh, we were sitting inside the Lane's pub. And he used to always say, this is my best pupil. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, he was sitting there, he had a pint of Guinness, and uh, this is two years before he died, but anyway, he gave, me a, he gave me a jig. And I can't think of the jig. And you know, I was the other day trying to think of it, and I couldn't get it together. Might come back yet. Uh, he called it Fraher's jig. Fraher's, yeah. And I, I, I was able to do the first part of it, but I can't think of the second part. Remember, Connie, I told you? Yeah. And I couldn't think of it. Is that the die di di da di dum di di da di di dum di? I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. But um, I can't think of the the, yeah, I can't the, the, the second, second bit myself. I did. I never met. But I have it written down. I have it written down <coughs> in the house anyway. I can always mm. check up on it when I right. get the time. Because there. he wrote down. He had a strange way of writing down the music himself, hadn't he? Well, he uh, he took the real notes and put them over into figures mm. like. Mm. Uh, uh, he draw the five lines there along the, you know, the five lines, and then he start, and uh, he called this one, like one on the E string, then right. this was two, this was three, mm. you know, on mm. the E string. Right. And then uh, he came over, uh, down the bass, he went all the ways over here, mm. but uh, you'd have to follow the string yeah. that he had it written <coughs> on all the time, you know. Right, right? so you and followed it by the number finger. Yeah, but you had to get every tune from him then. Because yeah. you, you had no notes, you know. Mm. So if you had the note, you know, you could pick up the music anywhere and then mm. carry on from there. But he was very smart, you know. Mm. <laughs> now, were you playing with other young people or were you starting to play with adults at this stage? At what stage did you start to play with other people? At house oh, dances I, I, or anything I, like Dennis that? Murphy really brought me along. Mm. I mean, Dennis was great because he, I, I was a kid and I was growing up, you know. Mm. And we go to all the dances, and I was going to the dances awful young, about 16, I'd say. And you know, Dennis was there, and we had two fiddles, and then there were other fiddlers, but Dennis was mostly what brought me along, because he lived right close to me, mm -hmm. you know. And I met him every Sunday and everything, and I could stop off at either his house or Patrick Keefe's house. And I used to go up to Patrick Keefe's house on Sunday evening, and uh, I usually found him home, you know. So, uh, but Patrick was the best for teaching. I mean, Dennis couldn't teach at all, you know, but he could play good, like, mm. I mean, you sit and play with him, like, he mm. carried you along, you know, and all that kind of stuff, you know, and uh, with Patrick Eve to write out tunes, there was no comparison. He had the patience, then, to deal with uh, the He had it in the head, too. 
Yeah. He had it in the head too, you know. He 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 he, known, he he didn't play it from a fiddle when he's writing it out. He played it from his head, you know, and wrote it all down. He'd write as much as eleven tunes. And when you get a bunch of tunes like that together, you usually forget them because you learn them too fast. You 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 pick them up too fast, and then you you go on to the next bunch, and you don't go back to them again. Do you know what I mean? I do. So you're able, the big advantage to his system is you could go back and look at his little sheet of paper. Oh, yeah, his system. I couldn't beat it for a yeah. kid. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's a guy teaching back there now. I'm not going to name him. Sure. But, you know, uh, he's doing real good, but, you know, he can't put it across like mm. Patrick mm. Keefe. You, know? you think it's important to have a system of writing it down, do you? Well, it's better for a kid, but, you know, today they have so many things, even in Ireland. I mean, they have so many things here, but even back in Ireland, you know, they have enough like television and, and radios and, and cassettes. Yeah, yeah. And you know, they go to flat calls and they take a cassette and they pick up. And if it, what they have today, the equipment is excellent if you have the music in the head. But if you don't have the music in the head, well, then you need Patrick Keith very badly. Mm -hmm. I'd say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I say he's your first priority. Exactly. Exactly. Or yourself. Or yourself. Or yourself. But if you have it in the head and have a yeah. tape recorder, you yeah. can make out like yeah. a bandit, you know. Now, what about? playing for the sets. I'm interested in when you started to actually play for dancing and play with other people. And Were you involved in house dancing? Uh, the house dancing I was involved in set <coughs> dancing and set dancing uh, oh, from a very early time. Mm. When I started out, went out to the first house dance, it was set dancing. Sets, polkas, they've danced the jig set, the Victoria, the set of Misers, the Walzelis cattle. The, all them dancers were danced, mm -hmm. but the polka was the most popular. They played two polkas, then a jig, then another polka, then a slide. A slide is a single jig. Uh, some, they're called slides where I come from, but they're really single jigs. And then you played a hornpipe to finish. Then on the jigs you played uh, two jigs, a polka, and uh, a slide, and then they finished with a reel. I haven't played them in 40 years. <laughs> back, well, now that you're planning to go now, home, so you'll be playing plenty of back now, them. and I signed a yeah. paper from Dublin where the, the thing was increasing back to set dancing. That's right. That's right. Set dancing was supposed to be It's increasing. the in thing now, Patty. That's what you're going back to, a total revival of set well, dancing. Well, I'm, I'm getting too old now for only around, but, well, uh, but anyway, I'll have a chance to meet Johnny later. You have us all fooled, I can tell you. I'm sure the lads are on the place. Yeah. So. Now, Tell me then what age you were when you came to America. I was uh, not quite 24. Mm. I was, uh, uh, I'd be tw I came in June and I'd be 24 in July. Mm. And I'm here 41 years. So you came out about 1949, 1950? 1949, you hit the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And did you come straight from your own home area, or oh had you, yeah. left, you left? You had oh yeah. left there. I came right from Rabi. From Rabi. From Rabi, and yeah. I did a fiddler from the neighbourhood. Leave one time and came to Boston, and he came up on a bicycle. My father, a lot of my senior years, I was talking about. His name was Jim Walsh, and he came here to Boston. This is a good. He grew up with my father. He was a fiddler. He played for him in them days, mm -hmm. and the dancing. But anyway, the way Jim went to Rock more to the train, you know, to take the train to Cove in them days in Cork. He rode a bicycle. Mm. <laughs> they were all talking about it. It's a hell of a way to go to America, off on a bicycle. Yeah, well, you know, and stuff like that. As long as you get there, I suppose. But suppose anyway, the poor fellow was only here a short limit of time when he died. Mm. But his brothers were here. I was at their wakes. They died recently here. Mm. And his sisters, a whole bunch of them were here, around Roxbury and around Jamaica Plain and mm. that section. So. so when you arrived in, in 1949, what, uh, what did you do? What work were you doing? Everything I could get my hands on. And when I married and had kids fast, I'd done even more than that. Mm -hmm. So I kept going. Every place I could get my hands on a job, I did it. Yeah. I played the fiddle at night and I, I worked in construction. I worked as a steam fireman. I was a stationary engineer in Chicago. But I didn't like Chicago and I came back. And I fired that boiler in in old Mr. Boston. You know where Mass Avenue is? Yeah. I fired that boiler for for uh, 10 years mm -hmm. and I quit that too and I went painting and hanging paper, more money. Mm -hmm. I kept going to every place there was more money. Every place there was more money I kept after it and I wound up in Needham. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, 
Reagan was a great president, but I had two houses that time, and I could sell one. Yeah. And I was able to keep the money because I had the other house. Yeah. So Reagan really put put me over he the hill with that. You know, oh, right. yeah, 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 it was really good in that. Well, we won't yeah. get into politics so many, but <laughs> I, he was really, he was really good in that one. Yeah. Oh. I had one in, in the Green Street in West Roxbury and one in Needham, mm. a modern house. Mm. So I'm living there right now, but now I have another house in Ireland. So we Chicago was the only other city in America that you moved to for a while. Y that's right, and yeah. I gave three years three there. Three years. But, uh, she's born here, of mm. course. And uh, Connie, then, your wife, is yeah, in Bostonia. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then her family was here, and my family was here. And, uh, Chicago is a great working town, all right, but I didn't know anyone there. There was nobody I knew there. Yeah. There was very few people. Uh, there was a few people from Patrick Heath's place there, mm. but there was none from my place there. Mm. None. Johnny was there for a while as well, wasn't yeah, he? He only, but not he only stayed a short while. Short while, not <laughs> the same time. Anyway. And tell me, when you were in Chicago, if you just switched to Chicago for a minute, were you playing much music? I mean, was Johnny McGreevy oh, would have been active at that time? I was with Johnny McGreevy all, all, all the that. time, and there was a great piano player at that time, and her name was Eleanor Kane. And uh, they lived in Washington R Street, and she was married to a fiddler. He was from County Mayo, Jimmy Neary. And you know, poor Eleanor, Jimmy died a few years ago, about three years ago. And uh, Johnny McGreevy told me the last night here, you know, he said Eleanor was in a home. Mm -hmm. And they sold the house, and they had, I think, five girls and one boy. Mm -hmm. And uh, the boy, I think, came last, Connie, didn't he? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think he did. Well, anyway, poor Eleanor was in. Uh, I got a tape from her not very long ago at all, a very good one, too. Oh, off, she was good in the Off piano. her own playing. Oh, mm. yeah, she mm. was very good. Mm. Eleanor mm. was very good. Mm. But uh, Johnny was telling me all that the last night. You know, it was mm. great to meet Johnny in McGreevy, and he's not well, you know. Mm. It, was, it was quite a while since you had met Johnny. Uh, they took me up to Chicago, I said to was about. Uh, about eight years ago. All I right. played in a pub in. in, in uh, 63rd Street, it was owned by Hobins from uh, Bohola in mm. County Mayo. And I, I met them all up there that time, uh, all the ones I knew. But you know, there's so many of them dead since. Jimmy Neary met me at the airport that time. And there was McGarry's from Mayo were at the airport. And uh, I don't even know where they are. But anyway, I know Jimmy's dead. Mm. You know, you play, you, you, every time you play with a fellow, when you get old, you better be nice to him because you may never <laughs> get seen. You may, you may never get seen, you know. So That's looking ahead and dead right too. But then well, are you... Yeah. Right there the last night, you yeah. know, McGreevy and my brother. Yeah. I yeah. mean, they were all playing with us there, you know. That's yeah, right. It was a case of handling them gently because they're, they're not in the no. best of shape, no. you know, on the bottom, yeah. could play good. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but they, they, they're not in the best of shape at all. The two of them, Johnny isn't either. Yeah, you know? yeah. You know? And Paddy, then how do you feel, this is jumping on a bit, but if you feel a lot of that generation are going, of course, um, is there something coming up to replace it? Are there immigrant musicians coming in all the time, or no, how is the tradition no, being no, passed on? There's no immigrant mus musicians coming e here permanently anymore, because uh, they're getting what they call the green card, and of course that's no good for Irish kids because there's no social security, there's no securities, there's no nothing, and you're gypped at the airport with the exchange rate of the dollar on the pound. So uh, I mean, it's deadly. Uh, they're better off to go to Europe, Western Europe, uh, Germany, France, and them places. To come over here permanently is the best deal. But if you don't get the permanent deal, I say forget it. I say forget it because you're wasting your time. You know, and they don't get that permanent thing anymore. Permanent residency is what counts because you have social security card. You, you have a, you, you'll get social security when you get older. They haven't that. Then they clip them at the airport, going back. The exchange rate now is about, I think it's something like one, 160 to the pound, a dollar 60 to the pound. Mm -hmm. That's terrible, you know. Mm -hmm. That's terrible, you know. When I came over, I remember I, you're supposed to bring in some money. I, was, I brought 10 pounds, I think it was uh, four dollars. It was four dollars to the pound that time in 1949. Mm -hmm. And then it went even, Stephen, about uh, four or five years ago, you could go back to Ireland on a trip and you could throw in a dollar and they give you a pound. It was a few pennies shot. 
and then it's, they started they started going the other way and stuff like that, you know. But I, I'd say kids that don't have permanent residency, forget it. Yeah. So that doesn't bode very well, then, do you think, for Irish music in America? What's the future oh, for Irish, Irish music? Oh, Irish music is, I'd say, right now, I'd say Irish music is finished in America if they don't get some new blood in there. Because it's, it's carried on now by Irish American. It's carried on. People like Andy McGann and uh, Kevin Conway and uh, some of them kids, uh, Eileen Ivers and uh, Liz Carroll and some of these people. But see, that music, you have to get the, you have to keep getting the, the seed from back there to keep it, uh, keep it step dancing the same way, you know. Step dancing becomes ballet if you don't, if you don't uh, bring over some of the original stuff. Yeah. Same way with greyhounds and all race horses and the whole bit. Uh, you, you have to keep firing it from the other side or, or, or to, till, till, till you can't go yeah. <laughs> That's, that's oh, an yeah. interesting theory, yeah. yeah. Oh, sure you do, but... Uh, <laughs> The traditional, uh, you, you lose the traditional method of playing it, you know. If you listen to some of them, uh, they have no tradition, you know. They, they, they play and they're technical and all this kind of stuff. But, you know, they, what they do, they're really great, you know. I mean, for what they have available to them, they're really great, you know. But the tradition is back there, you know. So that, that's the way it works out. You have to keep the tradition in there to keep it going good, but, you know. But uh, ah, Bush will totally turn around in a while and he'll start break the ground and then they'll let you come and then the next day Bush will come. And <laughs> then or, or maybe that, that only goes maybe, on for a while, can, a little bit. Maybe we can bring Reagan back again, you never know. <laughs> oh, no, they, they won't no. have a Reagan for a long time. <coughs> I don't think they'll have a Reagan for a long no, while again. we're getting now. an insight into I, your I, political I say, I say that is ideology gone. now. That day is gone. Come on, let's play a tune or something to cut all this talking. Do you want to play some other piece? Or tell, uh, tell us a little about it first now. And, Huh? Tell us a little about what it is. And uh, this one I got from Paddy O'Brien, but I don't know if I can think of it really. Oh. <laughs>
nice one. Yeah. <laughs> now that first tune isn't the, isn't a dance tune. It's uh, huh? that first tune isn't a dance tune then. Ah, uh, that's Carlin. Carlin, that's all, yeah. That's one about Carlin. Yeah. Do you like playing with Carlin's music? Oh, lad, I love his. Do music. you? I love yeah. his music. Yeah. Yeah. Sure I what do you like about it, Paddy? Um, uh, the way he did it. Mm. I mean, it's, it, oh, Carlin was the best they had yet, mm. and Bunting was. Uh, what do you call that other harper? Wasn't his name Bunting? Well, Bunting I have the I have the boat collection. Have you? Yeah, it was Bunting who collected stuff. And Petrie, from Petrie was good yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Northern Northern Ireland, uh, way back there, had, had some great stuff. Yeah, and what was what was the uh, the reel then you went into there? Uh, I don't know. You're not sure the name of it, no. You put that one after Paddy O'Brien. Oh, Paddy put that one after it. Yeah, yeah Paddy O'Brien, uh, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the box player. Oh, the box player, yeah, and yeah. he's a great player yeah. too. He's a great player. Yeah. Patio you enjoy great. his music. Oh, yeah. sure, he's great. He, yeah. he, he, he plays some. You know the tune you were working on, The Drunken Sailor? Uh, the one, one I was talking oh, about, Tommy Potts. I have, I have, I have been playing that. Have you? Yeah, sometimes I'll play it for you. I'd I love mean, to hear oh, it. I play that. Yeah. I, I don't know if I could go through could it, tried. but I, I don't think I can. Yeah. Seeing that you brought up Tommy Potts, just let me yeah, ask let me you try, one. Let me try it one more. Okay. The I fifth part has you. So long. No. <laughs> no, no, no. But no, tell no. me, you were listening but to some. But we brought up Paddy O'Brien. That's one okay. of Paddy O'Brien. Yeah. yeah, that's a lovely tune. And uh, what reminded you of it, I think, was the tape I played at Potts. Had you listened to any of Potts's music, you, you wouldn't have met him. Now you, you uh, didn't meet Tommy. Or no, no, I, did, I know his son well. Uh, What's his name? Uh, I know the son. I met him in. in uh, I met him in Sligo last year. Oh. Uh, Sean Potts. No, that's a nephew. Sean would be a nephew. nephew is yeah. it, is Sean I thought is it was nephew. his son. Yeah. No, that's oh. the, uh, the whistle player used to be with the Chieftains. Is that the man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sean he lived here in Boston for a while. Oh, I didn't realise that. I didn't realise that. No, yeah, he'd be a yeah, nephew. Yeah. But th that kind of music, how did you react to Potts' playing? And how, what did oh, you think? Oh, yes, Potts was a genius. Yeah. Potts was a real genius. Yeah. Oh, oh, lad, yeah. Even though he fiddled around with the tunes a lot now. No, and kind no, of no, it made no difference. There yeah. was something about his old music was weird. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he had weird music and he had lovely or lonesome kind of yeah. have a soul. Yeah. He had soul in there, you know. Yeah. I mean, music without soul is no good. Yeah. I mean, it's only uh, raspy. Yeah. You've, got, <laughs> you've got to have soul in it. Or, or if it isn't there, I mean, forget it, throw it away. And how would you, uh, what's, what's a good musician to you? What would you look for in a good musician now? Well, it, good it, it all player. depends on what you need him for. Nah. I mean, if you want to dance, you've got to have a dance player. If you want to listen to something slow, you've got to have someone that, something that will play it nice and, mm. and uh, set it up. You know what I mean? Mm. But uh, if you, uh, it all depends on what you want him for. And a good dance player now in your area growing up, if you were playing the fiddle or whatever. A good whatever. dancer, or oh, Morrison in New York was the best. Do you think so? So I'm sure he used played I like some of them. Mm-hmm. 
yeah. <laughs> that was one of Morris's. Yeah. Well, what is that? Do you remember the name of that one, do you? Um, Maud Miller. Maud Miller. Maud Miller. Miller. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. If you want to step yeah. dance or something. Do people like expect, just because you're from the Schlieff Locre area, do people always expect you to be playing the same stuff, the polkas well, and see, slides? Or it's very hard for me <coughs> to do something like I'm doing now because mm -hmm. I always played dance. And when you play for dance music, there's always someone dancing. Mm -hmm. And then you're kind of put in the spot when you, we, when you have to do When you've this. all these television cameras when you have and to do yeah. this, yeah. Mm. And there's nobody mm. dancing, there's no accompaniment. I mean, if I had a compliment like piano mm. or something, I can really play some good mm. stuff. But when you have to do it like this, like, mm. you know, but when there's a bunch of people dancing on the floor, right. and where I come from was a real dance area. It was yeah. all dance. Yeah. Up in Sligo and up in Mayo and up in them places, they sat around the fire. They sat around the fire and they just played and uh, nobody danced or anything, you know. Mm. So uh, it's a different kettle of fish altogether. Right, and when you <laughs> mention now, when you mention the piano you accompaniment. You miss all that dancing, even dancing carries you. you yeah, know? but you like a piano accompaniment now behind you when you're playing. I would if I have a good one, but sometimes there's, there's false chords and everything. Yeah. Sometimes you're better off without them because they're going ahead even. I like Eddie Irwin here yeah. uh, and the mother, Mary. Yeah. Uh, but Mary wasn't around the last night. I think she, she's getting old, you know. But Eddie, Eddie is going good. Eddie Edwin is real good. And Eleanor Neary or Eleanor Kane. Oh, that? well, uh, yeah. uh, she was no good to court. Ah. She played solo. Mm. I mean, Eleanor Kane, she played. Uh, yeah. I know, I, can I think of it? I haven't played a lot. Some of them I have forgotten. Well, she made the piano sound very Irish, then, huh? Oh, Lord, yes. She was born in Chicago. I don't know even what nationality she was. Mm -hmm. Anyway, poor Eleanor is in a home. If I ever go there, I'll have to find out where she is. Mm -hmm. She knew Connie and the whole family. Mm -hmm. You know, she was real good. Tell me, uh, Paddy, a little bit about the music scene in Boston, then, over the past, uh, since the 1950s. Uh, some people say, for example, that New York is a better session city, that it's a s city where you can get... You know, no, 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 no. When, New, New York <laughs> is, when, when music dies in Boston, it dies in New York. It dies everywhere. This is one of the most Irish cities in the States. And I have a son, a good flute player out in San Francisco, and he's married to a Yankee girl, and she plays banjo and guitar. And uh, they, they play in pubs like the... What do you call that pub, Connie? Islands 32 and uh, what do you call that? Uh, the plow. Oh, yeah. The plow. They have a plow oh. out there. We were out there a few oh. times. That's a good political but, name, uh, anyway. Islands 32. Um, yeah. <laughs> there is no, no, really no take here for uh, traditional music. I mean, uh, or in England either. There's, there's really no take for traditional there. You just keep it alive, that's just about all. Yeah. Uh, now, did you ever involve yourself? Are you, were you ever drawn into teaching in any way? Or is it something no, because uh, I could teach real good, but when I go to Ireland with God's help, I, uh, the trouble with kids here, you can't keep them because there's so many musics in this country, mm. right piled up in a bunch that it's very hard to keep kids together. Sure. It's very hard to keep kids together. I mean, you have classical, and you have Western, and you have Irish, and you have that, and you have the kids stuck in everything. Mm. And, 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 and it is very hard to do anything with it. But right now in Killarney, it's just as bad. We were back in February, 
And you know, they're teaching American dance that I never saw in this country. Did you see it? Did you see it? I never seen it. They're teaching it right in Killarney in a kind of a, of a dome there, and there's a girl from Cork teaching it, and there's a fellow I don't know where he come from. And uh, they're teaching that stuff there. So uh, Irish music back there, you know, is getting a, a walloping too. Yeah, After kind of, all, yeah. England lost the tradition due to, <coughs> due, due to turning modern. Mm. England had mm. a good tradition with mm. harm pipes. Uh, some of them harm pipes were good, and they lost the whole tradition. Mm. The, the whole thing the whole thing went due mm. to going modern. But still, even when you were growing up now, Killarney was the ah, town. When I was growing up. But, but now you see, it was still been a very tourist. When I was growing up, there was and we really was followed it, in, it everywhere. was it in Killarney itself, you say? I mean, was it actually in the town itself, or was it really in the countryside ah, around no, 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 it was from where we came. <clears throat> yeah. Where, where we came from, where uh, Patrick Eve, Dennis mm -hmm. Murphy, mm -hmm. Tom Billy, Dean Tarrant, mm -hmm. Julie Clifford, all them people mm -hmm. came from. Let me switch back to that one, Tom Billy you mentioned. Did you ever Well, well he meet was a him? blind, he yeah. was an old lad, I knew Tom <coughs> Billy. You knew him well, did you? He was blind and he was crippled also, you mm. know, because yeah. he had a queer shoe. He wore one of them queer, very queer shoes. Oh, and he rode a donkey, and he had a way more pupils than Patrick Keith. Yeah. He a rode a donkey. More. He had two Tell twice as many. What do you mean by queer shoes? Well, one of the, he wore a shoe that, uh, you know, went up past his ankle. Yeah. He was crippled, mm. like he had, he had one leg and there was no blood in it. Mm. It was cold all the time. Mm. You know, that cat thief I was talking to you about, he told me one time, he said, Jesus, he said to me, Tom, Billy slept with me last night, he said, mm. and no place it plays him with that cold leg, he said it was freezing. <laughs> <laughs> He used to keep Tom at, he used to keep everybody that played music, he used to keep, but he loved Tom, you know, yeah. he loved old Tom. Yeah. Tom was blind as a bat. Yeah. Yeah. And he was witty as a son. Was, was he? Oh, yeah. he was. He's a good was. man with stories. But he was, his two eyes were closed tight. Mm. And he used to ride the donkey and he used to play the tin whistler up on the donkey. And how, did he used to play the tin whistle? The tin whistle. He played fiddle and tin whistle, but mm. he had a, a lot of pupils. Mm. More than Patrick Keefe, a lot. Mm. You know. kind of a whistle, Patrick what kind of a whistle would he have played? Can you remember? Do you know that a lot of them use these he generation a clock, type of... He played a clock. clock yeah, the black uh, one. Clock, but that's not in the key D. You couldn't play it with other instruments. That's You'd have to play yeah. it all by itself. Yeah. D is the only one goes with the, yeah. with the fiddle or with the... Come here, Paddy. How did he get around if he was blind then? How did he find his He got his around way? on the donkey and he used to mm. keep two former shoes on the donkey. Two iron shoes, you mm. know. And then if he went off the road, he'd know he was going off the road with the donkey. And if he, he was teaching a fellow one time, his name was Sullivan, his name was Bill Larry. And there was two houses tied together and they were attached and they were both the same. And you know, the wise guys used to think, you know, that they could, he, I think he went by sound. When you open a gate, sometimes it plays. Yeah. You know, it's a da -de -de -de. When you open an iron gate in Ireland, which is up in cement, you know? Yes. And if you wanted to take Tom into the other house, he wouldn't go in there. You'd know that he, if you took the donkey by the head and Tom opened the donkey, the, he'd know he was going in the wrong gate. Uh, he'd uh, know he was going in the wrong gate. He went by sound all the time. Isn't it a great way for a musician to go? Oh, and, uh, and tell me, he, he lived by teaching now. I mean, he made his living by teaching. Is that all he did? Oh, he did. Yeah. But, uh, Tom, like made a, Tom made a very, the poor fellow made a very poor living. But, you know, uh, so did Patrick Keith. How much would people pay you at that time? If I was a, you know, someone like O'Keefe. To Keith. teach? Yeah. Ah, my mother lot of us, and when I was a kid, used to give Patrick Keith something like five shillings, and that was quite a bit of money that time, you know. But uh, you'd do him for a night in a village, you know, or something like that, you know. But, uh, I mean, today, you know, Ireland's a different place altogether. They'd laugh at you, it would change today. When I was a kid, there was no, there was no, no paper money. It was all silver. But today it is all pounds. You go into banks and stuff like that, and if you give them silver, they throw it at you. <laughs> they, they, they certainly do. I think we have a good old tradition where, where I come from, down through the years and stuff like that. But I, 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 I paid a lot of attention to fellows like Morrison and Coleman, because especially in reels, they were really great, you know. Mm. But the other musics like polkas and slides, they were very far back. They, they, they didn't play them, and of course, you know, if you want to judge somebody as a player, you have to take the whole bit in, you know, airs and mm. the whole bit, and then you look at the, you look at the whole picture. Mm. I mean, there's no point in a fellow coming in and playing 
reels all day, mm. are playing jigs all day, are playing uh, polkas all day, are playing airs or slides or whatever you want to play. Well, you're on the point now of really having come the full circle because you're just within less than a month of going home, really, aren't you? I am going but back to 25th of May with God's help, and uh, yeah. I hope she comes with me when she's born here. And um, uh, I think she probably will. I think she, will. she probably will. Are you looking Eventually forward? Are you looking forward to going home, then, Paddy? Oh, sure. Yeah. Well, I, I won't stay there all the time. Mm, of course, uh, yeah. The mm. kids are here, you know, mm. six of them. Of course, yeah. And uh, uh, do you think you do you think you'll teach now when you go home? People will want you to. Oh, won't if, they? if I get yeah. a few pupils, I'll teach them yeah. because I want to keep that. Uh, yeah. I'll keep that seed alive yeah. and pass on what I got from Patrick Keith, especially in that area, uh, and yeah. pass it on. I mean, they're not interested back there. Here, you have to play everything. And you spend time between America but back and there, Ireland. Yeah. You stick mm. with the area, mm. and mm. then you're going to town. I mean, but mm. uh, over here, you just can't do it because mm. Uh, mm. Uh, there's too many other uh, counties butting in. And if you want to play, like that's the reason I never did play that much in yeah. recent times here because I couldn't play what I like to play. Yeah. And well, uh, here is a situation here now in Boston College where you can play what you like to play. So maybe to end up, you can't win it alone. But when you're yeah. playing in a, in a session, you have a problem. You have a problem. Sure, yeah. you have a problem because yeah. you have guys from every county coming in there. Yeah. The only way you can do it is start the tool and start the tool ahead in, of them. Get in before the rest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. I know start, all about start it. Start the tool ahead of yeah. them. But I mean, yeah. that only works for so long when right. the other guy okay. starts. Uh, well, listen, let's end then. So we have just a few minutes left on this tape. So let's end. Would you play some polkas or slides? Let's end with some no, sleeve local slide. music. None I'm of this other 32 I'll county see if stuff. I think of a slide for you. Okay. Slides of the years. Uh, well, you'll, be, you'll be playing <laughs> okay. plenty of them in well, a few that's weeks. That's a time. single G. Yeah. Yeah. If I okay. got down to, if I got down to real work on it, maybe we've time for another one. We have time for another one.
Hadi, thank you very much for coming and talking and playing. <laughs> it's not very good, but you yeah, know, I, uh, I haven't played it much lately. Yeah. Well, you'll be playing plenty. Thanks again. Thank you. Well, you're very welcome indeed. You're very welcome.